Now I want to show you how to efficiently build up system tests or acceptance tests that verify the behavior of our production application. So we saw a smoke test uh, before that connects to my application and actually creates a new coffee order here. And this is one example that in fact resides in my production um, code project. So in my coffee shop, not in a system test yet. So that is a very basic um, test that just verifies whether the application has been deployed correctly. And what I want to show you already is how I structure this test here. So I have a test where I just say create some order and now verify the whether the order is in the system and so on and so forth. And what you can see here is that is very readable and very small um, test scenario, very a small method that you can comprehend. What I typically see in projects is something like this, what I call naive uh, smoke integration test that basically puts in all the logic for a specific test scenario into one class. So here we have, well, I use Jack's Arrest uh, client to actually connect to my application. This now doesn't matter what technology we use. Here I again want to have some test that just runs with a very basic technology, just plain JUnit and then Java because it's faster. And then I, you know, create a new client and um, use the Jack's REST um, logic here. I say create a new order with Espresso from Colombia, similar to what I did in a command line. Now, please create some JSON and so on and so forth, and then post this to here and verify whether it's actually successful. So if you get a, a successful response, then um, we know that the order is hopefully already in the system. We can check the location and so on and so forth in order to get back to now also verify whether it's the correct data. So we connect to it and load the order here and then assert whether all of that is correct. And then again, we can also load all of the orders and see whether that identification is contained in all the orders. And now you see, okay, if you read through it, you can kind of comprehend what is going on. But one of the issues here that we have with these um, type of tests that is not really maintainable, because now all of that is part of one test method and that is supposed to um, reflect the test scenario here but what happens if while well, the test scenario changes so for example espresso changes to something else or columbia changes to something else or if we have new uh, test scenarios well then it's not really obvious we actually have to read through the code and see that we don't miss uh, anything here and even worse what happens if the structure changes of my uh, contract or um, the way how I communicate with my application, for example, if JSON, uh, JSON changes to something else or um, if HTTP changes to something else, what you see here, well, then you can literally throw away this test method because, well, what you do, you mix too many concepts here. Later on, I will show you how, this, how to make this a little bit more maintainable. But if you see um, already uh, what I did here in this example is I outsourced all of this lower level logic, how to execute, um, all of these behaviors, uh, for example, how to create an order or how to load an order. And then here in my test scenario, in my system test, I only execute what I want to test. New order, Espresso Colombia, create the order, then load it from the system, verify it, maybe load all the orders and verify that it's uh, contained and things like that. But this is very easy um, to, to write and uh, to read uh, and to comprehend. So also what I do here, this is um, still again my, uh, my smoke test that is part of my application. I connect to my running application and that executes very, very quickly. So one of the important things for me locally when I am in my development mode, I want to have very quick verification that this works. And in order to do that, what I do, I separate the test lifecycle from the test environment lifecycle. So what I already have, I have a test environment that runs locally. What you saw before is similar to these Docker containers or however you want to run your application. And then the tests actually, they don't have any other runner or extension. They don't fire up stuff. They just connect to something that is already running. And this is much quicker verification because you don't have to wait for setting up these environments each and every time. There is a lot of test technology out there. I will uh, talk about this a little bit later as well. That helps you to make that very easy on the Java code to set all of these things up. For example, some similar environment or some Docker containers, which is very convenient on a code level, but it doesn't really make sense if you look at the overall runtime and test execution time, because you have to set that up 
well, each and every time you execute these tests. And what I want to do instead, I want to set that up once and then just fire up all my tests against the already running environment because this, this is just much, much quicker. So if, you, if I just execute, I can execute this again um, or even the naive uh, smoke IT, it runs in the same uh, performance. This executes just very, very quickly. And that is an important thing to see that the, uh, that the system test uses my application just in a, in a similar way how it would run later on in production. What I do here is I run my application in Docker containers locally, what you saw before. That is my application under test, the coffee shop. It, in my case, uses a database. This might or might not be mocked for the scope of this acceptance test or system test. Depends what actually makes more sense or what is easier on a development side. And then I also, well, I have a backend here. So the barista, this um, has some communication. If I create a coffee order, then at some point my coffee shop will send this order to the barista. And of course, I also want to verify that contract that this verification just works as expected. And then what I could do, I could implicitly test that by setting up the correct um, coffee shop application and actual barista backend locally, for example, or on my test environment. Or what I can do is uh, instead, similar to code level tests, I can um, I can um, um, replace that with a mock. I can, for example, have a mock server technology such as a wire mock and then not have the actual barista application, but just a mock that I can control and use to verify, uh, verify the behavior the same way like I would do that on code level tests. And what I want to do now is I want to set that up locally. I want to set that up once, so basically fired it up in the beginning of my development session and then just verify the tests against this already running environment that this runs very, very quickly. So uh, what I can do um, then, I can use some technology and this really depends how your application is running in a way that I can now hot swap and change my well changes in my application here in a very, very um, fast way with very fast feedback. So for example, what I do, I have my uh, running environment that you just saw and I can execute my tests very, very quickly because I separate this life cycle. And also in the same way, what I can do, let's go into my production code because this is how I run my um, um, my application. What I have here, I have this builder that sets up all of my uh, hypermedia examples. So for example, what you saw in the resource uh, resources resource here, is some hypermedia links like how do you uh, get all the coffee types and where do I find the orders and things like that. And what I can do, I can just like add something here in the code. So I just change my production code, for example, say add some uh, hello world example here. And what I then can do very, very quickly, I see the update here with now the hello world response because my live code just has been changed on the server. I can do this. Uh, I can revert this change as well. And then I see immediately that now the hello world is gone. And um, as well, in the same way like I did before, I can re-execute my integration uh, test, my end-to-end um, -end integration test or my system test and just verify whether now this behavior still works. So this application here runs in a special uh, development mode that will uh, show a little bit more later on. And now the point is to get this very, very fast feedback. So what I said before about code level integration tests, where I think it doesn't really make sense if you look at the overall feedback loop at the time um, um, until you get the feedback whether later on in production your code change will uh, work or not, including all of the uh, responses, all of the HTTP uh, resources and JSON mapping and whatnot. This is now the very fast feedback and the verification that this works. So again, you can change something on the code level and this will be reflected depending on the application mode that you run. I run an open liberty um, runtime here with a specific uh, plugin that allows this development mode. And then in the same way, the system test just connect to this already running application that can use some other things here locally for example, some other Docker containers. And then I just have a very, very fast verification that is already very similar to what will run later on in production. And now I will show you how to uh, use that, including the barista mock server.